In the last video, we designed a Wayne Bridge oscillator. Today, I would like to go ahead and put that circuit together and see how it performs. So I've gone over to the rack and I've picked out all the values that we're going to need in the circuit today. But as you can see, I've not yet assigned any particular value to resistor R1 or resistor R3. I'd like to change R1 a few different times so we can see how changing the gain of the amplifier portion of the circuit would affect the resulting oscillation. The first time I build the circuit, I'm going to leave off resistor R3 and the two diodes because it's not necessary for the circuit to work initially. So I finished building the circuit here. Initially, I've chosen a value for R1 of 20 kilo ohms. Now that causes the nominal gain for the amplifier portion of the circuit to be 3 and for the nominal loop gain to be 1. I don't expect this circuit to actually work because we expect in the real circuit there to be some losses and we're going to have to compensate for those losses by increasing the nominal gain of the amplifier a little bit more than what I've done right here. But let's go ahead and test it. I've connected the circuit to the DC power supply here and we're powering the op amp with plus and minus 9 volts here. I've not turned it on yet. I'm going to monitor the output pin of the op amp with channel 1 of the oscilloscope so we can see if the oscillator actually works. All right, I'm going to turn on the power supply. Let's hit auto set over here on the oscilloscope. We're seeing noise here on the oscilloscope. The circuit is not working, and the reason it's not working is because the amplifier gain is not high enough. Let's swap the value of R1 from 20 kilo ohms to 22 kilo ohms. So that would put the nominal gain through the amplifier at a value higher than 3. Let's go ahead and turn it on again and hit auto set. And it looks like it's working. We don't have a perfect sinusoid because we've not added the diodes to the circuit yet. Let's check the peak-to-peak -peak voltage and the frequency to see what they are. It looks like the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is about 16.2, 16.4 volts. That's roughly what we expect for a saturated amplifier. The most we could ever expect from the op amp here is plus or minus 9 volts or 18 volts peak to peak and obviously there's internal biasing in the op amp so we're never going to get that. I have a speaker here and I'm going to add the speaker to the circuit at the output. This is an audio signal and we should be able to hear it through the speaker. So one side of the speaker I'm going to hook up to the output pin of the op amp and the other side I'm going to hook up to ground. So our peak-to-peak -peak voltage has dropped down to 3.8 volts. The reason why the peak-to-peak -peak voltage has dropped so much when I attach the speaker is because the speaker is loading down the amplifier quite a lot. This speaker is a 64 ohm speaker, so that's quite a strong load for the amplifier to have to drive. Let's check the frequency. We expected a frequency of 880 hertz and we're getting a frequency of 909 hertz. So we're reasonably close to our design frequency here. What I want to do now is choose an even larger value for R1. Let's choose 100 kilo ohms to see what the signal would look like in that case. Our signal now looks very much like a square wave and the reason for that is because the amplifier is completely saturated. This is probably too much gain through the amplifier. Let's lower the gain back to something more reasonable. So I've just inserted a 33 kilo ohm resistor for R1. So the circuit works. It's a little bit too much of a square wave and we're going to clean that up in a moment with the diodes. I'm actually a little bit happier with this 33 kilo ohm resistor than I am with the 22 kilo ohm resistor. The main reason I'm worried about the 22 kilo ohm resistor is that our loop gain is dangerously close to the threshold of not being able to work at all. If we were to hypothetically build this circuit again, holding the same values of components from the rack, it could potentially not work due to component tolerance values of plus or minus 2 to 5 percent, for instance. Let's proceed with the 33 kilo ohm resistor here and add the diodes to the circuit. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It looks like we have a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of only about 1.64 volts, and that's roughly what we expect since R3 is shorted. I'm going to use a 22 kilo ohm resistor for R3. This should increase our amplitude. It looks like now our peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 3.36 volts, and our frequency is 893 hertz. 
So we're now really close to our design frequency and we have a relatively beautiful sine wave. We could add a speaker to the circuit at this moment and it would stay relatively sinusoidal but of course the amplitude would be reduced. If I were to actually use a speaker in a circuit, the best way to do it would be to add a buffer so that the loading of the speaker wouldn't affect the oscillator itself. So what controls the amplitude of this sine wave that we're seeing here? In fact, it's the diodes that control the amplitude of the sine wave. If I change the voltage here going to the op amp, we're still going to have the same sine wave out. And that's what causes this circuit to be very stable. So we have a peak to peak voltage of 3.36 volts. And as I start turning down the voltage going to the power supply, we can see that this peak to peak voltage over here on our signal is really stable. Our sine wave is not changing at all. And it's going to stay really stable until the voltage gets so low that the amplifier starts to have a problem. Let's see at what point we start to see problems with our amplifier. There we go. So once the power supply starts to get too low of a voltage, we start to see the amplifier saturating. Otherwise, this is a really stable circuit. Today, we've designed a Wainbridge oscillator operating at audio frequencies, and it's relatively impervious to fluctuations in the power supply.